salutations gamers and welcome back to another episode of the channel this video is not like the others because you'll actually be learning something for once so this video will be mainly focused on creating thumbnails through dead by daylight models and you can be able to light pose and do whatever you please with them just don't do anything weird first things first we have to download blender Preferably the highest version you can because, yeah, it's kind of better than the other ones. Then, what you'll want to do is download XBS. The link will be in the description. This will allow us to port our Dead by Daylight models into Blender, and then we can do whatever we want with them. So just download that. And just simply follow the instructions on Blender to download it. Now let's just boot up Blender, and here we are. The first thing we want to do is delete the default view. No one likes you. And then we just want to get to you know, some navigation controls. Um, you can use the scroller to zoom in and out. Push down the scroller to kind of look around whatever you're looking at. And hold shift to kind of pivot to the side. Now we install XPS, the other file that you downloaded by going to preferences, add-ons, install, and go to wherever you installed it, click on it. Make sure you do not unzip the file. I have everything installed, but when it first shows up, you won't exactly see it, so you just search up XPS, and it should be there, and you just click the check mark. And then close that, because you're done with that now. So, you may be wondering, where the heck am I gonna get Dead by Daylight models? I don't want to port them, that takes a billion years, and it's painful to do. Well, I have the solution for you. It really shocked me when I first figured this out, but the best place to find Dead by Daylight models? Flippin' DeviantArt! So, the guy I found, who actually does this really well, is Cobblestein. He ports tons of Dead by Daylight models for us to use. The main one we're gonna be using is just good old Blight. Once it's downloaded, we just want to open it and drag and drop our thing to the desktop and let it copy there. So now, once we have it all downloaded on our desktop, we just go back to Blender, File, Import, XNA Lara or XBS, and just click this, Blight, the Blight again, and Generic IM dot Mesh. There he is, the Blight himself. Sadly, EV does not work for him, so you have to you have to very quickly change this to Site. And if you have a GPU, please turn this on. It'll make your rendering experience a lot better. And this allows us to see what it looks like in rendered view. Maybe a little fuzzy at first, but there we go. We have our Blight model. Now what we want to do is pose him. You can do any pose you want. I'll just do a uh, basic pose. To pose him, you have to click on the bones right here and step Optimo Pose Mode. So you can move things by clicking G, rotate things with R, and scale things with S. And the Y angle is Y, and the X, and then Z is up. Which, if you just go X, axis, you can move it like that. Or you just be a lot similar and just click on one of his arm bones that actually functions properly. This one. And just click G. And you can move it around however you please. Now let's pose him using the knowledge we learned prior. So once you're done making your pose, you just want to go out of object mode, just to be sure, and hide the bones by clicking this button here. So we have the pose of what we want to render. Now all we need to do is put the camera in. So first things first, we need to know the YouTube resolution for thumbnails. And the resolution is 1280 by 720 pixels. To do is go here, which is the output properties, and go 1280 by 720. Now what we need to do is move our camera. By clicking this button, we can instantly snap our view to the camera. And by clicking view, and then navigation, and walk navigation, don't do fly, you will regret this. Walk navigation allows you to navigate the camera like a video game. You can click shift to go faster, and WASD to move. And then Q and E to elevate and descend. Get it, descend from the beyond. So now we position it in the place we want it to be. So I want to put it right here make this the main center of our thumbnail. So now, the render, it seems to look pretty good. And then we look at it and it's like, what the heck is that? Well now comes the most fun part, lighting. These little things you can actually just light the scene. You go shift A, light, point lights. These are the most helpful for this scenario. And then click on this light bulb over here, change this to 1000, or any digit you want for the strength. And then you click Shift D or Control C and Control V to make multiple of them. You always want to have a light that is on the back of them, so it gives you this kind of like 
this kind of aura around them, a little outline, if you say so. So there we go, we have a little outline to demonstrate the shape of our main character, so he doesn't quite blend in with the background. The next thing you want to do is go over here, turn the film, and make it transparent so we can actually put an image in the back, because you could render a background if you want, but I would highly advise putting an image back there, because it could save on a lot of time. So, the next thing we want to do is grab a background. You, you just search up DBD, whatever map you want. I'm just going to say a Macmillan Estate Render. You look through your images, and then you pick one you want. I preferably like this one, because it has a high resolution that I can use in my renders. Now we go back into Blender here with our model, and just click on the camera on the edges right here. Then click Background Images, Add an Image, Open, Desktop, and find whatever it is called, and boom. We just turn the opacity up here right here and go, and there we go, we have a slight background. But the problem is, it doesn't match at all, it doesn't look anything like that. That's where the lighting comes in. You take this white here, and you make it more blue, so it looks like he's actually part of the background here. So you can edit it to any color you please. Now what you want to do is add a light that's somewhat in the front, and change the power down if you want to. So you can at least see what you're looking at. You can make this any color you want to kind of represent a contrast between him and the background. You most definitely want it to be a different color or it would just look too similar to the background and just blend in. Now all I need to do is click render and render this image. But before we do that so our computer doesn't die, we want to change this down from 4000 to 250. Of our performance, instead of making it the whole thing, we just make it 64 so it renders by tiles. Then we click render, render image. And there we go, we have our main character in our render. And you're wondering, where the heck is the background? Well, the whole point of this camera background was just to give us an idea of what it looked like. So now we just want to go and we just want to close that and go into the compositor. In here, we click Use Nodes. And we don't really need to use this at the moment, we just see it drag it over here. This compositor will be important later, so just don't delete it. Shift A and bring in a viewer node, which allows you to see it. And then drag this right here. If you click View in the corner, you could just zoom in and out. Now what you do want to add is an alpha over, and just put it so he is actually on top. Now you want to go shift A and add image, and grab the very same image that you used earlier. But we can make this look a whole lot better with the Blender Compositor. Now we just want to go scale, to get rid of the slimy Dead by Daylight watermark. Let's bring it by like 1.2. And what another thing we do is defocus. This allows us to kind of blur the background so we can actually focus on our character a little more. That may be a little too much, but this should be nice. So that looks pretty good, but we can make it better. Add a glare node. This allows every emission thing to kind of glow in our scene. And if you're afraid the glare isn't that much, you can always crank up the value and go back in the compositor later. And then we have to add my favorite thing, RGB curves. These are very helpful for changing the color of any image you have, and you can just pop it in the background here. We want to make the background a little more bright because it's a little dark. And maybe a little more blue by cranking the blue up. Now, I recommend summoning another RGB curve right here. Just moving right here. And then you could edit what your blade looks like and make him brighter or darker. And there we go! We got the main gist of our Blender thumbnail. Where to put it? This could pause this thing from earlier. Yeah, this is how we actually render things, so we just gotta plug that in. So now all we want to do is just click render and, Im and render the image again. And there we go, the final product. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed this video about learning something about rendering. I'll preferably do another video in the future of how to add images on top, but that's kind of a video for another day. Well, in the meantime, everyone, have a great night.